The Holy Spirit is probably one of the most misunderstood members of the Trinity because of us, not because of the Word of God. And I don't know about you, but I want everything that God has for me. And you have to understand that everything that God has for you, He's going to bring it via the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is how God's going to bring it. And so what I'm asking you to, with me is to commit every week as we build on this thing. To, to, this is so important for your spiritual growth and where God wants to take you. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start in the book of Acts chapter 19. I know it's way into the book of Acts, but what I'm going to give you context here is that we know that the book of Acts records the history of the church, right? And all the, the accounts of the apostles and the accounts of, of, of Paul. But here we are, nine cha- 19 chapters into the book. Now it's decades after the church started. And I want to give you a picture. This one scripture will help you understand what is going on in the church today. By the way, I want to say this. The church, the birth of the church didn't happen because a few guys had a great idea and said, hey, let's start a church. It didn't happen because they had a great marketing strategy. It didn't happen because they went to an art conference or a training. It happened in and through and by the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that if the Holy Spirit would have never came, the church would have never happened? But we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. And we need Him more than ever before right now in the church today. The Holy Spirit. So Acts chapter 19, verse 1 and 2, it says, While Apollos was at Corinth, he was another apostle. He was one that Paul uh, uh, trained up. Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, no, we have not even heard of the Holy Spirit. This is decades after the church started, not too far from where it started. And here people saying, we've never even heard of this Holy Spirit. And what's interesting is that's still the case today. We get a lot of people that we get saved and we thank God that they gave their life to Jesus. But many of them never heard of the Holy Spirit. Never heard of Him. There are a lot of people that are going to heaven that love God, praise God, but they have never experienced the fullness of the Holy Spirit in their life. And I think it's because the Holy Spirit's got a bad rep. Listen, he's got a bad rep. A lot of people are afraid of what they don't understand it, what they don't understand. Isn't that true? I don't know about that. So if, if we don't understand it, we automatically say, well, it must be bad for me. And you know what? It's not based on the Word of God. <clears throat> a lot of this is bad theology. Or it's based on manipulated experiences, experiences said to be the Holy Spirit. But it's not. And so we, cre- we created this. We, we have taken, man has taken what God has called divine and supernatural and powerful. And we've treated it some, like something common. And we've confused it for a lot of people. We have denominations that say there is no Holy Spirit. We have denominations that abuse the Holy Spirit. And so we need some clarity. So what I want to do is I want to demystify some things to help you understand who he really is. Because I don't know about you, I need him every day. I need him. I remember when I was growing up as a kid, I used to see some weird things happen. And I used to say to myself, if that's the Holy Ghost, I don't want it. Who would? When you see crazy, weird things going on, you don't want that. And, And I don't want that confusion for you. And I believe, listen, the Holy Spirit does never brings confusion in your life. He always brings peace and He always brings clarity. And if there's something confusing and somebody's calling it the Holy Ghost, it probably is not. He never produces confusion and He never leads you. He always leads you into peace. And so I want you, listen, maybe you've been saved a long time or maybe you've newly saved. I want you to experience something fresh through the Holy Spirit. Amen? Can I say He's not an it? He's not an it, okay? He, is a very, he plays a very important role in our life. And I don't know, I want to receive everything God has for me, but you have to understand that everything that God has for you is through the Holy Spirit. So I, here's, here's what I want you, my job is to, is to provide you, to lead you to clean, fresh food, clean, fresh water, but I can't make you eat. Eat's up to you. You got to eat if you want. So you have to do this. So regardless of, here's what I need you to do. Regardless of what you might already know or or what you think about the Holy Spirit, I want you to go on this journey because we desperately need a move of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So we're going to spend some time today. Today is Holy Spirit 101. And then we're going to build on this thing, okay? We're going to go into 201 on, on. But I want to spend some time helping you understand 
his nature, who he is, right? How we operate, how he operates, right? Because we get his name two different ways in the, from the Bible. We got the Holy Spirit and our Holy, and how Pentecostals like to say, we got the Holy Ghost. And I think the reason why we like it is because it sounds really good when you shout, the Holy Ghost is in the house. You know, Holy Ghost. I prefer Holy Ghost. If you want to say Holy Spirit is the same person, he's not offended. The Holy, it's the Holy Ghost, right? But here, here's what happens is the reason why we use both in the Bible is because the Bible translators could not find an adequate English word that translated well from the original language. It is found, by the way, 800 times in the Bible, and it's translated from two languages, Hebrew and Greek. But listen, here's their challenge. Here's what I want you to see. In the Old Testament, the word is ruach. Can you put that up, Libby? The word is ruach, which means a wind, a breath, a violent exhalation, a blast of breath. So you see the dilemma right here. The translators were saying, wait, Father, Son, and Holy Breath? It just really didn't fit, so they had a hard time with that, right? It's found in Genesis 1-2. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the Spirit of God, the Ruach of God, was hovering over the waters, right? The New Testament word in the Greek is the word pneuma. Somebody say pneuma. Right? It's a current of air. It's a blast of breath. It's a strong breeze, okay? And so if you work with tools, if you work as your mechanic... You work with what's called pneumatic tools, tools that are powered by air. And that's where we get that term from. So once again, the dilemma of the translators, they're saying, we're not going to call him a current or a breeze. Like he's more powerful than just a current or a breeze. John chapter 6, verse 63 says, the spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I've spoken to you, they are full of the spirit or the breath of God, right? So he's saying, these are not just normal words I'm speaking to you. This is the very breath of God speaking to you. So what I want you to know so that your Christianity doesn't ever become some stale religious practice, you've got the breath of God speaking over you. Amen? So to understand, I want to share with you four characteristics that we see in the natural when it comes to wind, right? And we're going to compare it to, to the Holy Spirit, right? Look at these four characters. The first one is you can't see wind. Can you see wind? You can't see wind. It's unseen. You see, the other day, it was a beautiful windy day. I was sitting out in the back on my, on my back deck. The sun was beaming, and I was sitting there feeling the breeze on me. And the sun, I was just enjoying. I was feeling the breeze. It was beautiful. Guess what? There's nothing weird with that, is there? You do it all the time. But yet, when we come to church, and people said, oh my God, I felt the Holy Spirit. That's weird. It's weird that we feel him. Can can I tell you, he's a God that wants you to feel him and experience him. He wants you to feel him. But we get people, we get all tripped up in church. Well, that's kind of weird. What's that feeling? I don't know what that's like. Listen, I know that we should never base our Christianity on how we feel. But God gave us feelings so that we can communicate with each other and with him. With him, right? So what do you mean, pastor? He wants you to feel him. Today I felt his presence. Today it felt like a mighty rushing wind in my spirit. I felt that you didn't, if you didn't feel it, your feelings broke or you're out of communion with the Holy Spirit. Something was happening today. He wants you to feel his presence. He wants you to experience it. And, and that's my prayer. My prayer is that, that God would reveal him into your life a, a fresh layer of the Holy Spirit. That you would have a fresh encounter of the Holy Spirit in your life, right? Can, you know, when we come together every week, you don't come to hear me preach. You come because after a long, hard week, you know if we get together, he said where two or three are gathered in my name, who's there? He's there. And Jesus said what? I'm sending somebody in my place. Who's that? The Holy Spirit. He wants you to experience him. John 14, to John chapter 14, chapter 17, Jesus is happy having his very last conversation with his disciples at the Last Supper. Now I want you to understand, he is taking this time to share with them the most important things they need to know before he dies on the cross. The absolute most important things. And here's the main three things of the, those, three cha- those four chapters. Love God. Love people and the Holy Ghost. 
how much we need. The vast majority of it is about the Holy Spirit. He's letting them know that, listen, even though I'm not going to be with you here, I'm sending you somebody in my place, right? And he's going to dwell with you. But even more, it gets even better, right? He's going to dwell with you. And next week I'm going to talk about dwell with you, dwell in you. In essence, he's saying, listen, I know I'm good, but I'm sending you an upgrade. Come on, how many of you need an upgrade? I'm sending you an upgrade. You see, because Jesus was with them, but now he's sending, I'm sending somebody who's going to be in you, not just with you. Can I say this? Listen, I want you to understand something about the Holy Spirit. See, he comes to dwell with you, and he comes to dwell in you, and I'm going to share that scripture. But one of the things you have to understand is that my wife, she dwells with me, but she doesn't dwell in me. And the relationship Jesus had with his apostles, with his disciples, is that he dwelled with them. But he says, I'm sending you an upgrade. He's going to dwell in you. It's totally different. John 14, 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, counselor, comforter. Nothing weird about that, right? To help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, neither understand him, right? Because it neither sees him. That's where people are comfortable. If I can see it, then I believe it. Right? It says it neither sees them nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives. There it is. For he lives with you. And will be. That takes on a whole different meaning. Whole nother level. Can I tell you, there's a lot of people that come to church and they don't feel them. Because they're having a hard time with the seeing part. Well, if I don't see it, I don't know, Pastor. They, they feel they need to see it. And they miss out on the greatest experience of their life. Right? You can't see him either, but you know he's here. You know he's here. And honestly, listen to me. That's the real reason why we come together. Because we know he gave us that promise, right? God is here. God is here. Sometimes he comes softly. Like a whisper. Other times he comes like a mighty rushing wind. There have been times I'm in my car. and I'm, I'm so Many times, I'm, can I tell you that the, the, the most of the time that the Holy Spirit visits me is when I'm in my darkest or lowest place. That's the greatest time he comes. See, because I love him. But you see, it's when I'm in that place where I'm saying, this isn't working. He comes and when he's a, like a mighty rushing wind, he encourages me. Sometimes he'll come like a soft whisper. And he'll, tears will trickle down. You don't even know why you're, why am I crying? It's just his presence saying, he's comforting you. I got you. I know what's going on in your life. Come on, it's what he wants to do in, your, in, you, in you. And I want everything he has for me. Amen. So what do we say? You can't see it. Here's the next one. Wind is unpredictable. How many of you ever drive by like a dealership or whatever and see that guy flipping around? You never know what direction he's going, right? You ever see that guy? I almost brought one here today, but I knew it was going to cause a problem. But that you see that? You can't tell what direction he's going. You can't, you can't choreograph a dance for him because wind is unpredictable, Right? The, it's unpredictable. You can't tell. Jesus said it. He says, the wind, you don't know where it's coming from. You don't know where it goes. Didn't he say that? The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it's going. So is everyone born of the Spirit. He's unpredictable. And can I tell you what's going to happen? Is when you and I come to church and we decide that we want to worship Him at the song that we like and we should do this and that instead. Because Listen, He doesn't fit in your predictability box. Can I say that we have a system that we follow in church. We're going to do worship and prayer. And my wife came and did the middle. And we're going to do what the Holy Spirit wants. If he doesn't want me to preach, I don't preach. If he wants us to minister, we minister. If he wants us to worship, we worship. He is unpredictable. And this is not the Moses show. This is the Holy Ghost show. We follow his leading. We follow him. But when you come in here and you're like, well, I don't like that song. And, um, I would have never said that. I would have said something different. You, you quench the spirit in your own life. You quench it. In a few weeks, I'm going to share with you, I'm going to talk to you about five things that kills the move of the Spirit in your own life. I want to share with you because you see, we think that we're immune to that. The Holy Spirit's with me. No, He doesn't tag along on certain things. So I want to share that with you so you don't want to miss that. But you know what? Why is He unpredictable? Because He's God. (laughs) His ways are not your ways. 
His ways are higher than our ways. He is God. He is unpredictable, okay? And the reason why he's that way is because if, if it were on a system, God doesn't want you to worship the system. He wants you to worship him. One time, if you think about it, God spoke to a person from a burning bush. But that didn't set the precedent for how God was going to speak to people. Because after that, he never spoke to Moses in a burning bush again. Why? So that people wouldn't go and worship the burning bush. That's why God is unpredictable. Another time, there was these guys that had a blind friend, and they brought him to Jesus and said, Jesus, hey, would you come and do the laying on a hands thingy that you do? And you know what Jesus said? I don't fit in your box. And Jesus spit in the ground and got a goober and mud and slapped it on his face, and the guy got healed. Why? They, God wants you to worship the Holy Spirit, Him, not a system. Can you imagine the conversation those guys had after, after they left? Like, what's that? That's not what we intended, but hey, it worked, praise God. You understand? God is unpredictable. Win is unpredictable. And we have to be careful when we try to fit God into something that only makes sense to you. Well, I don't like it that way. I don't lift my hands that way, Pastor. If it only makes sense to you, you'll never experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit. God is God. His ways are not our ways. Amen? And if, if, can I tell you, listen, we need a move of the Holy Spirit. But it may not come the way it came years before. It might be totally different. We have to be open to what he wants to do. Third characteristic, wind is powerful. We know that they use wind to generate electricity. They got those big turbines. It can sail a ship and it can bring destruction to a city. We see it firsthand. We live in Hurricane Row. We've seen what a hurricane can do. Those winds come and they lift off a roof. They destroy buildings. It is powerful in nature. So listen to me. There are some things that you and I go through in life that human power and effort cannot fix. Cannot fix. We need the real power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's the supernatural power of God that sets a person free that has been addicted to drugs. I thank God for 12-step programs and everything else. But if you want them free, we need the power of God. It's the power of God that supernaturally heals your body. Only God can do that. And can I say that there are demonic, demonic forces that come against you all the time. Things that you face. I've had to deal with demonic forces over the last six months holding us up. But listen, there are some things that you just can't wish away. You can't just go and burn your little sage and be like, well, I want no negative energy around here. Your sage isn't going to chase away a demon. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Just trying to help somebody because sage seems to be a big thing. Young people, listen, that's the lie of the devil. You need the Holy Ghost in your life. The only thing sage is going to do is make your house smell good and it might cause a fire. So please, please, you need the Holy Ghost in your life. God, the Holy Spirit does not fit in your church predictability box. Can I tell you, I need this power in my life. God, there are moments that I feel weak. You have those moments that you just want to quit. You just, you just want to quit. You just want to quit on certain things like this. I've been trying. I've been trying. You just, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says, I ain't letting you quit. You might want to quit, but I ain't letting you quit. It's like Hulk Hogan on the inside of me is like, come on, you old people know what that is. Young people be like, I don't know who that is. But he doesn't let you quit. When he's got a purpose for you and, 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 he, and he starts to blow on that thing and you want to quit, he's like, no, 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 no. He starts to speak on the inside of you. The inner witness of the Holy Spirit talks to you and says, come on, you were created for this thing. He's like the coach you cannot see. He starts to coach you. And sometimes I know that life has a way of draining us. But when you have his power, he starts to remind you of your purpose. And you start to say to yourself, there have been times you said, God, is it worth it? Everything I'm dealing with, God, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And he starts to blow. He starts to blow. He starts to blow on your life. So I want to tell you more than anything, get close to the Holy Spirit. Get close. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So what's your response? Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, come on. Come on. Charles Finney is considered to be the father of modern revival. Many of his revivals took place in western New York, a lot of where I'm from too, and specifically around that area. So listen to me. 
He was a 19th century attorney. Listen to who he was. He was an attorney and a Presbyterian minister. In his own words, he said this. He, was, he said he was comfortable knowing God on an intellectual level. He wrote in his autobiography that his life was uneventful and predictable and he desired something more. And then he had an encounter with the Holy Spirit in the back of his office in the woods. The Holy Spirit filled him and changed him, not only his life, but eventually the lives of thousands of people that came to know Jesus because he had an encounter with the Holy Ghost. See, we think encounter with the Holy Ghost, let me just get my little tongues and that's it, I'll be done. If you let the Holy Ghost allow the fullness of what He wants to do in your life, you will never be the same again. It's not just a church experience. It's a life-altering experience. I think we got to get that out of our mindset. Oh yeah, we just got to get spirit-filled. No, it's beyond that. There's so much more he wants. And look what he said in his book. He said, the Holy Spirit descended upon me in a manner that seemed to go through me, body and soul. I could feel the impression like a wave of electricity going through and through me. Indeed, it seemed to come in waves and waves of liquid love, for I could not express it in any other way. It seemed like the very breath of God. That's what he wrote. He was kicked out of the Presbyterian church, by the way. Because he was spirit-filled. Can I tell you this? Some of us here today, we need a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. In your life, in your marriage, in your thought life, over your heart, in your Christianity, we need a fresh. If your Christianity has been pretty dull and uneventful, we need His presence. We need His power. And I will tell you, it starts to propel you towards God's perfect plan for your life. Come on, how, how many? How, I need fresh wind of the Holy Spirit. Last characteristic is that wind is refreshing. I love this one. It's nothing better when you go to the beach and it's a hot day and you get that breeze coming off the ocean. I love it. I could sit there in a hammock all day and let the breeze put me to sleep. You know what I'm talking about? Or, or, or you're sitting out on the front porch drinking iced tea and that breeze just comes and hits you. Something about the refreshing wind that comes, right? And you just love it. I have two trees in my backyard. And when the trees start rustling with the wind, it just creates a fresh, a refreshing. I feel refreshed. There's something about what even God does in nature that refreshes you. And I just felt, feel refreshed. And I want you to know that when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, if you feel dull and broken and bored, and, and I, He refreshes you. Come on. It's like a nice tall lemonade. My lemons. You know, like, you ever have those, like we get those days a lot in Florida, especially over the winter, where the weather's just right, and so you want to crack open the windows and let the fresh air just come and remove the staleness out of the house. Can I tell you, that's my prayer. Holy Spirit, crack open our lives and get the staleness out of our lives. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has, it can, has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by what? His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. Maybe, maybe, perhaps the part of the reason why some of us don't want to fully open our hearts to the Holy Spirit is because we know that He has the ability to search all things. He can search things in us that he can find things in us. Now, I grew up in a church that we taught about the Holy Spirit, but for me, it wasn't always clear. It wasn't always with clarity. And so, therefore, there were things that I experienced, things that, that I didn't like, things that were kind of scary to me as a kid. And so there are types of churches, like I said, that are a bit extreme. We have no restraint, and we call things the Holy Ghost that are not. But then there are churches that because they don't understand the Holy Spirit, they've been taught to reject it and say it's of the devil. And we can't be that church. And I grew up, listen, listen, when, you, when all this thing that you, because of the wrong teaching and misunderstanding, I had a misperception of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know who He was. And it was hard for me to receive a gift that He wanted to give me. Think about it, I want to give you a gift, but you're like, I don't know you, so I don't want to receive your gift. And that's what was going on. I couldn't receive it. 
And it wasn't, and it wasn't until I went to Bible school that then I learned about the simplicity, about this gift that God wanted to give me. And so what happened, I had to reprogram all the wrong thinking in my mind so that I can receive what he had for me. We have to reprogram ourselves, right? And anyone that tells you, hey, stay away from that Holy Ghost stuff, listen, stay away from them. Stay away from them, okay? They, the Holy Ghost is, 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 it wants to give you everything that God has for you. Remember, it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's time for us to reprogram our minds. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, I want to read to you out of the Message Bible. It says, don't grieve God. Don't break His heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for Himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. It said it's the most intimate part of your life. The most intimate. You know what that is? You're washing dishes at home and you're thinking about stuff and he comes and he whispers in your ear. There are times where you, just, you don't even know. Sometimes he just invades your life. He says, I'm, I'm here. What do you need from me? And all he wants is for you to partner with him to accomplish God's will on, on this earth. That's what he wants to do. His job is to partner with you to fulfill God's plan for your life. He was a partner. So let me give you, um, real quickly, three things that we need to do in order to have this fresh wind in our life. Number one is let go of the fears and misperceptions. Now, like I said, over time, either through bad theology, bad feet teaching, or, or through people that have manipulated you, we, we need to change what we think or what we think we know about the Holy Spirit. And we've got to be willing to approach the Word of God with an open and receiving heart. When you do that, listen, you realize the Holy Spirit's not spooky. I hate when I walk into a place and it's like, this is spooky. I don't like that. It shouldn't, the Holy Ghost shouldn't feel like a haunted house. Right? If you walk into a place, something ain't right. Like, there's a ghost in here. We got to cast that ghost out of here. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit, and I can't, please, let me say this. I love growing up, the, I love the fact that I grew up Pentecostal. I love it because we, we did things, we saw things, we experienced things. We weren't afraid to do anything. But, but part of us, part of, part of what we did, we had no restraint and understanding of the Word of God. Part of it. And so we would, in, we would oftentimes use legalism to c- try to control what was out of control. And you can't do that because the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, is what? Freedom. And if you're not experiencing freedom, the Spirit of the Lord isn't there. So I want freedom in my life, right? So we've got to change some misperceptions. Realize that everything that God has for you is good. And He wants you to have it. So here's my encouragement for you. And I'm going to ask the worship team to come because I'm going to finish up in in just a minute. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. The Message Bible says this. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Can I tell you He's not against you? He's not going to pitch you in some weird hypnotic trance. It's, that's not what he's going to do for you. Okay, it's not. Here's the second thing I want to tell you. Go all in. Go all in. Listen, not just as it relates to the Holy Spirit, but everything that God has for you. So, so here, here I'm going to say, I'm going to step on some toes real quickly. Whatever God wants to do in your life is not going to work if all you do is come around to church every four or five weeks. What God wants to do is a consistent Work in your life, right? And it won't work. It won't work if church is just a hobby. If the Holy Spirit is just, well, it's just something I put on like a cake. No, no, it's not going to work unless you go all the way in. You'll never have the best that God has for you if you go in halfway. You got to go in all the way. At some point, if you really want to find out what the power of God has for you, you got to be willing to go all the way in. I got one, two amens. Praise God. Because when you do, your life will be radically transformed. Jeremiah 29, 13, it's a conditional promise. Look what it says. You will seek me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. So you want to find me? You want, that's the wrong scripture. The wrong scripture. So here, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart. So here, this, I remember this is a prayer many years ago. This is a prayer that I made when I was a young man. And I said, God, 
If you have it, I want it. Come on, can you pray that with me? God, if you have it, I want it. Come on, make that a regular prayer. God, if you have it, I want it. I want it, Jesus. And you know, you know what I remember? Because I was in a place where I was desperate for God. It's desperate. I said, God, if you have it, I want it, Lord. I want anything you have. Here's the third thing I want to tell you when I ask the worship team to come. You have to develop an intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit. He's your friend. He wants to be closer than a brother. And he has a role to play in your life. God the Father plays a role. Jesus plays a role. The Holy Spirit plays a role. All three are mentioned in this one verse that I'm going to share with you. It's actually a benediction at the end of the book. It's a blessing pronounced. Look what it says, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I love how Paul said it. And I'll share with you out of the Message Bible. It says, The amazing grace of the Master, Jesus Christ, the extravagant love of God, the intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Isn't that beautiful? So here's, I'm glad that we, we know the Father. And I'm happy that we receive Jesus as our Savior. But don't stop there. Don't ever choose to live your life on this earth without ever knowing the fullness of the Holy Spirit in your life. We know that God the Father loves us. We know that. And I know that for some of us, we still struggle with the idea of a loving Father because maybe we didn't have one on this earth. Maybe we did have one, but He wasn't loving. And what I want you to understand is there, there has to be a settling in your heart. You have to understand that was the devil's plan. The devil's plan was to create a misperception in your heart about a heavenly father through your own dad. What you have to understand, your heavenly father loves you unconditionally. He loves you no matter what. So settle that today. The second thing you need to know, you have to, even when we mess up, he still loves us. You know, my kids, they do disappointing things all the time. But that's when they need us the most. So, so how can you tell that someone loves you? Because you can always tell the value of something by what someone else is willing to pay for it. And what did it cost our father? His son. What a valuable, valuable cost. So God's son saves me by his grace. That's why we worship about him. That's why we can't stop talking about him. That's why we can't stop bragging on him because of what he did on the cross. We lavish him with praise. Why? Because he took my place. But for a lot of people, this is where the Trinity stops. God the Father, God the Son. But there's so much more in the Holy Spirit. So I'm asking you, hey, let's commit the next few weeks Let's invite friends. Let's get people in the church. Let's believe God for a move of the Holy Spirit in here. He comes to fill you, lift you, encourage you, speak to you, correct you. He comes to lead you, right? Can I, listen, listen to this. As I was studying for this, you have to understand that the enemy for years has tried to bring confusion has tried to discredit, bring disunity and deception to any doctrine in the Bible that provides power, freedom, and influence for the believer. Any major doctrine or any major move of God, because why? If it's not understood, it is ridiculed, ridiculed and tossed out. And one of the doctrines is the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. It's the doctrine. Why? Because the devil wants to keep you powerless and ineffective. But we're shedding the light on the Word of God today. We're shedding the light on the Holy Spirit to let you know you can have everything that God wants you to have. I'll close with this one thing and then I'll pray. There's a place near the equator on the Pacific Ocean. It goes almost all the way around. It's called the doldrums. The doldrums is a nautical term 
that refers to the belt around the earth near the equator. It's where the northern hemisphere trade winds collide with the southern hemisphere trade winds, right? And here's what happens. When they collide, they cancel each other out. And, and that's a place in the Pacific Ocean where there's no wind there. And back before we ever had motorized ships, if you accidentally sailed there, you never got out. You died there. And here's what I want to tell you. Can I tell you that some of us, we've kind of wandered in the church today, but your life is in the doldrums. You know you need fresh wind from the Holy Spirit or think something's about to die. Can I tell you, you need a fresh breath of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what it is that you need, but He's willing to blow on it today. All you have to do is open up your heart to the person of the Holy Spirit. Would you stand with me? Can we just worship Him just a moment? Let go of all your fears, your misperceptions. Seek Him with all your heart. Let's develop an intimate relationship with Him. We're just going to worship the Lord a minute, and then I'm going to pray for us. say come. We say come. My prayer, Lord, for them this week, Holy Spirit, is that you would invade their lives this week while they work and while they go to school, wherever it is that you've called them to be, Father God, 
I pray, Holy Spirit, you'd invade their life while they drive in the car, wherever they're at, invade their life. Remind them, Father God, of the goodness of the Lord in their life, Jesus, I pray. I pray, Father God, just revelation, Lord. I just reveal things to them. Even this week, Father, I thank you. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name.